apropos of our interview today, and again, you know, the beauty of a book like uh, uh, the uh, Kudata Williams uh, book, this, this most recent one, The History of Terror and Survival in the War Against Reconstruction, the, 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 the value in that book is both in the specific information it gives about recounting these reports of violence and the idea that the the war continued in a different form the civil war continued in a different form as represented by this these testimony from these hearings in 1871 but what it also teaches you is the way that we the way that you need to interpret history rather than a series of events that take place on a timeline there are movements and ideologies and schools of thought, if you will, and incentive structures that do not dissipate because of an event, even if it's a war, even if a half a million people are killed. These interests and um, idea, they live and they struggle to survive. And the way that they survive is, uh, you know, can be uh, via government, via violence, can be, you know, everywhere in between. And you understand that the hearings that they had in 1871 about black families being uh, beaten and threatened and killed off their land and the restrictive covenants that you were still getting like in the wake of World War II, about where black people could live. And then to, you know, the, 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 the fraud perpetrated by banks, redlining all of it in terms of keeping black families from owning uh, homes and whatnot. This is all part of, a, of, the, of, the, of the same thing. Just different forms of it. I mean, I've, I've said many times before that, like, um, woke, anti-wokeness is like the vaporized version of the racism that existed 40 years ago. Still racism, it just comes in a slightly different form and one that is not quite as concrete. And it, and it, and it, and it presents itself in a, in a slightly different way. With that said, here's Will Kane and Rachel Campos Duffy and Pete Hegseth, Fox and Friends this weekend, Mother's Day, taking issue with the idea that Joe Biden would mention the words white supremacy. The poison of white supremacy as I did my inaugural address to a single out as the most dangerous terrorist threat to our homeland is white supremacy. And I'm not saying this because I'm at a black HBCU. I say it wherever I go. You heard the reaction to that wow. statement. I think even for the students who were present there at Howard, everyone, because it was so naked, could see what an obvious pander. Yeah, he said the battle is never over. Um, we're never going to get there because this is clearly a battle that helps him politically. I think it's so cynical. I think it's actually evil to lie about America. That, that is not America. America is not racist. America is the least racist country in the world, which oh. is why we have right now people, you know, clamoring to get into our country. Mm -hmm. um, it, that's just a fact. Yeah. I love the fact that you could talk about we're the least racist company and then refer to like people clamoring to get into our country. We're the least racist country. That's why all these illegals are coming over. That's the why border. we have all these people. <laughs> why do you think we are have so many jails and cages that are full? Because people want to come here. We we, we uh, incarcerate black people at a higher rate per capita than apartheid South Africa did. Oh, well, okay, but why do you have to blame the jailer? I mean, the least racist country. I mean, America, uh, there are some very racist countries out there, so I don't think it's like a, a foregone conclusion that we win. I just think, like, we have a lot of racism here that I think... I mean, 
the to the extent that there's any point like okay maybe people did think that he was pandering and he was saying it but that doesn't make it any less true yeah <laughs> i mean in fact i mean it's true what they're probably pissed about is that you're probably not talking about it enough and you're or, just talking to, it to us measures right against it you're just talking to us about it um what was interesting that that these um white supremacists on fox and friends in the morning on the weekends didn't take issue with the, the um, primary, th you know, the d domestic terrorist uh, part of that quote. Um, if you have any doubt as to what constitutes the greatest domestic uh, um, terrorism threat, put we I just put that in the um, uh, the IM. Yeah, pop this on the screen. This is the FBI. Now, of course, they're deep state, and they uh, everyone knows that the FBI has had a long history of uh you know protecting black people and a long history of not supporting white supremacy but according to them as uh, you know scroll up a little bit on no the on the whole page yeah this is strategic intelligence assessment and data on domestic terrorism 2022 and if you uh look into that um you will see that white supremacists have committed more than half of all deaths caused by domestic terrorism since 2010. And according to this document, primary threat of domestic terrorism today. Yeah. I mean, who else would it be? Muslims? Like, that, that, the Fox News being so, like, going to their smelly insults every time Biden says white supremacy they're they're playing the exact opposite role they used to when Obama um, would say, you know, we're at war with you know, whatever he would say, and they wanted him to say radical Islam. Um, it's funny how, like, they're, they're basically doing the exact opposite, but just trying to defend uh, white supremacists instead of... Yeah, their actions are, but, but their actions are the direct opposite, but their their intentions are exactly the same. Exactly. Completely yeah. consistent. They just, uh, they have a wide range of repertoire of tools to maintain uh, the notion that we are not a racist society. And this isn't to say that we're the only racist society no. or that we're the most racist society i think compared to like europe certain european countries we're actually better in terms oh, of diversity without a doubt oh certainly yeah certainly um but that's because like a lot of countries have, have their own it. problems yeah. and uh and lack the civil rights movement and we ours is not uh uh you know is nece not necessarily unique or necessarily worse um but to the extent that we have made any grounds and we have without a doubt we have made grounds um super slow <laughs> super slow in fact it's like almost like you know has donald trump made money if he had just invested what his dad gave him and never touched it he'd probably have more Same amount, yeah. so it's not inconceivable that we have one of those dynamics in terms of like uh our emancipatory but i really do think like younger people like in the past like uh, 20 years there has been great strides uh at least in younger people's perspective on these things that i think is you know going to change when they are running things but to the extent that we have made progress it has been only um first off, to the extent that we've made progress those three people sitting on that couch are exactly the people who fought it yeah they just didn't fight it as well as they hoped and to the extent that we have any progress to make in the future those three people represent what that progress has to fight again they are the obstacle they are the ones standing in like you know just the notion of progress and put and putting their you know they're not quite putting their bodies on the line but they're putting their mouths on the line that's what's going on there yeah it is an improvement that they have to say they're against wokeness and not like we're against race mixing yeah i mean that's that's an improvement is it is it at the level of materially impacting people's lives maybe maybe i don't know how you would measure that 